So I have a few seconds, I guess. Uh, while I was creating these slides, I realized that my handwriting looks an awful lot like Comic Sans, so keep that in mind as you're going through these. So my name is Kyle Sexton. I am an engineering manager at New Context, and today I'm going to be speaking to you about HashiCorp Vault. Maybe, all right. So modern environments are complex. Developers and administrators are having to manage you know, all sorts of technologies, load balancers, web servers, databases, object stores, all sorts of technologies that they are in charge of and to make sure that they are running. And secrets are on all those devices and developers and administrators have to come up with ways to manage those secrets. You know, how are they gonna handle certificates or passwords to databases, things like that. And developers spending time doing those things provides no business value to your business, right? It's wasteful for a developer to spend time coming up with data bags or Oracle wallets or all those types of things. And worse, it creates sprawl across your organization. So you have a group of developers over here, they really like encrypted data bags, they love them. And this group over here, they really like GPG command line stuff, and they're doing all that kind of stuff. So you have sprawl across your organization because everybody's doing different things. What HashiCorp Vault provides is a unified interface for your developers and administrators to manage secrets in your organization. In the landscape of technologies, it's gonna be geared more towards the server side of technologies. So it's not gonna be something that you install on your desktop like LastPass or 1Password or things like that. It's definitely more on the server side. Um, but the difference between it and other server side technologies is that it manages more of the secret life cycle, right? So the entire life cycle of the secret as opposed to just encrypting something for you. So why should you look at HashiCorp Vault? So it's gonna give you secure secret storage, it's gonna give you dynamic secrets, encryption, leases, and lastly, revocation. So Vault's gonna give you secure secret storage. And so you can kind of think about that as, you know, it's gonna be your encrypted key value store. So if you've used Redis or things like that, that's kind of where this falls in. It's just an encrypted way to store key values. Vault is also gonna give you dynamic secrets. So you have an application that needs to access some resource. Instead of giving it a static resource, static username and password, you can generate credentials sort of automatically for that. Vault will give you encryption as a service. So instead of having your developers come up with their own programmatic ways to handle encryption in their application, they can actually just use Vault and it will handle the encryption for them. So they don't have to come up with a different solution every time they're programming. It's going to give you leases on your secrets. So you can say, I want this secret to only be useful for the next five minutes or one minute or 30 seconds. It's kind of up to you, um, but Vault will give you that capability. And lastly, it's gonna provide you with the ability to revoke your secrets. So if something really bad happens, you're gonna have the ability to sort of revoke an entire class of secrets. You can revoke all the S3 secrets or something like that. So now that I've kind of sold you on it, how do you get started with Vault? The first thing you're gonna run into when you start Vault is that it has a different method of unsealing than most other things. Most other things, they give you like one password to unlock it and get it started. Vault actually has um, this secret sharing thing. So you will have multiple keys that you use to unseal it and then finally get the application started up. Some use cases that people use Vault for. Um, MySQL, so you have an application, instead of giving it a static username and password to speak to your database, you can actually have Vault generate a username just for it that's temporary and gets removed automatically. If you guys are using one-time passwords in your application, Vault can actually manage that process for you. So if you want someone to be able to log in with two-factor to your website, you can use Vault and leverage its um, 
two-factor capabilities. Um, an SSH certificate authority. This will allow your administrators to log in to your remote servers using signed certificates instead of just uh, the usual certificate that they're used to. So it will be your certificate authority. So you should use Vault for a unified way to manage your secrets in your organization. <laughs>